Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the wet, heavenly backyard garden. I gotta tell you, it's been very wet over the last several days, if not several weeks in my area. Massive thunderstorms moving across the area, winds whipping around left and right, forward and backward, heavy rains falling. Already for the month of July, I'm up to 13 inches of rain here in the heavenly backyard garden. With that being said, I haven't had much opportunity to look up in the sky at night because it's been loaded with moisture and clouds, even thunder and lightning. But I've been working on a project and uh, about 10 days ago, I did have a clear night and I was working on this project and the project was, let's find Pluto. Yeah, welcome to Heavenly Backyard Garden. We're gonna search for the planet or the subplanet Pluto. Well, I got the telescopes behind me and they're still buttoned up, uh, covered with the 360 24-7 covers because the rains continue to move in and across the area. At the moment, we have a partly cloudy sky, as you can see by the sun and the shadows. However, I expect more rain for tonight. But I was able to complete the experiment, even though I would like to have more data, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be getting that much more. Pluto is just past opposition. It, had op it passed opposition just two days ago. So right now it's at its brightest, <laughs> it's brightest. Yeah, Ma uh, magnitude 14.3, if you wanna call that bright. How do you find Pluto with a magnitude of 14.3? It's not easy, but with Nina and with Pixinsight, it can be done. So let's find Pluto. All right, what do we know about Pluto as far as it, where is it in the sky? And looking at the view from Stellarium right now, it's uh, in the uh, constellation Capricornus and it's near the Milky Way. And zooming in, you can barely see it. Uh, it's magnitude right now is sitting at 14.38. Not very bright at all. Uh, but anyway, there it is according to Stellarium. But, you know, just looking at a star chart, it's almost impossible to find. Right now, it's approximately 3.24 billion miles from Earth. So it's way out there. And, uh, uh, well, let's, let's see how to find it. Okay, let's go into uh, Nina right now. All right, next step is to go into Nina. So in Nina, let's go into the um, uh, image pane. And in the image uh, pane here, you have these selections here. You have, of course, the image, image history, the, well, at least the way I have it uh, set up, the autofocus, plate solving, the three-point polar alignment, that's always good to have, and the, the orbitals. That's what I want to go to, the orbitals. And click on the orbitals. And you don't have to update it for the planets. The planets are automatically updated. And, uh, you, of course, you have the options for the comets, uh, the asteroids, and uh, unnumbered asteroids, even the James Webb Space Telescope you can look for. Anyway, uh, go into the planets and go to, well, let's see, Pluto right there. And just load right there. And uh, there's that big holly tree right there right now. Uh, so the Pluto won't be coming in to my point of view until around uh, um, 11.30 tonight, thereabouts, but it doesn't matter because it's cloudy out, sky, out, out there anyway. But anyway, uh, let's go into the framing right here and click on that, and Nina will automatically set up the framing. As you can see, the uh, planet doesn't get that very high in the uh, southern sky, uh, only reaching a uh, uh, magnitude at my latitude of 32 degrees north of only 33 and a half degrees uh, above the horizon. So if you're further north, it's going to be that much further south. So it's very low in the southern sky. All right, there's the framing for where Pluto should be. It should be somewhere in the middle right here. It, it should be exactly in the middle right over in this area here. But... Um, uh, you know, it won't show you, but this is the, the plate solve where Pluto should be located. So the next thing you got to do is just simply slew and center uh, to the target and let the uh, uh, rig find the target itself uh, through plate solving. Of course, I can't do it tonight because the sky is cloudy, but I did it the other night and uh, I, I, I took the images. I took about, about 15 minutes worth of images um, 
maybe 30 minutes. Uh, anyway, I took it with the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor telescope. Not ideal for planetary, but it did work. Uh, and um, so the next step I need to do is to stack these images and then go into PixInsight. That's the next step that I do to find the planet. All right, let's go to PixInsight. All right, here's the stacked image in PixInsight. Actually, it was only six minutes worth of data uh, that I had on here, but Pluto's in here somewhere, and ideally it should be uh, right, right in this area right over here, but I wouldn't know. Can, can you find Pluto in this image here? Uh, which one is, you know, if I took several uh, different nights of imagery, uh, and then uh, stacked them together, then you would see Pluto would have moved somewhat with the other stars didn't. But I don't have that luxury with all these clouds and the rain that I'm having across our region. But anyway, uh, the next thing I, I need to do is image solve this image. Now, since I did not stack this in PixInsight, I stacked it in Deep Sky Stacker, uh, it is not image solved. So I need to image solve it. Um, uh, the little shortcut that I use though is I'll just take a uh, one of the fit files I'll just take the medium, the one in the middle here, and I'll, I'll stretch that just to see what I'm doing. All right, there's one of the images right there. I'm going to image solve this by going into scripts, uh, going into um, uh, image analysis, and go into image, I'm looking through the microphone, uh, image solver right here. It should come up with the data. And since it's a fit file, uh, it has all the information that I need to solve this image. And uh, so I just say, okay, let's do it. And it's gonna do that. Takes a little bit of time, not much. And it is done. All right, next thing I need to do is go into scripts and then go into render, and then go into um, right here, annotate image. Okay, now in anno annotate image, uh, I have the different um, uh, options I could uh, an uh, annotate with, and looking at uh, the options, if you go down, you'll see there is the options of planets. And I'm going to click on planets. And then I was just going to go, OK. <laughs> that didn't take long. All right. Uh, there's the, uh, the object right there. Now, if I overlay this onto the image itself, uh, it has Pluto right smack dab in the middle. Right here. Right there. Whoops. It has Pluto right in the center of the image. Um, I got white over white. It's very hard to see. There it is. All right, but let's transfer this over to this image here. But the first, before I can do that, I need to uh, star align. So let's take uh, these two images here. Take this one here uh, and take um, uh, star alignment right there. Let's um, Let's bring the window over here for you. All right, I'm going to take this image. That's the one with the annotation on it that I calculated. Drop it into there. And then let's take this image here and star align it with the uh, fit file. Now, if you stacked in uh, um, um, PixInsight, it would already have been image solved. But nonetheless, it's now solved. I'm going to uh, stretch this over here. All right. Now, next thing I can do, I'm just going to do a shortcut here. Um, I'm going to uh, duplicate this right there. I can uh, close star alignment. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to call this, I'm, I'm just changing names here. I'm going to call this starless. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to call this, um, yeah, I'm going to call it starless. Uh, for reasons you'll see in a second. And then for the annotation, I'm going to call this stars. It's just, I'll show you why in a second. All right, going over here, adding stars, little subroutine I have here in pixel math. Uh, 
I have it set so that I got starless plus stars. And I just add those two together and it should put it right on top of the uh, image. And there it is right there. I can, uh, and uh, I need to stretch it. So where is Pluto? There it is. Now to get a better idea, let's take the original that I copied. Let's align it right here. All right, let's just put this on blank one on top of the annotated one. And there's Pluto right there, see? There it is, magnitude 14.37, not the brightest bulb in the sky, I guess the brightest star in the sky, but there it is right there. That's how I find Pluto. Interesting. This works with any planet. Uh, of course, you don't really need this with uh, Jupiter, certainly not with Jupiter, uh, and Saturn, Mars. Um, Mercury, well, it'd be kind of hard to do because Mercury's hardly ever in the uh, starlit background. So, uh, and Venus probably wouldn't work with this either in Venus, but um, uh, it's difficult to uh, plate solve in the twilight of the sky. But anyway, in the dark skies, this will work particularly with, uh, well, obviously Pluto, uh, Neptune, and Uranus all work. Uh, you can verify the fact that you are indeed on the planet itself, but there it is. There's Pluto. Now, if I get several nights of clear skies, I could take several succession nights of uh, images, several successful, successful? They won't be successful with the clouds. I could take several successive nights of imagery and uh, Pluto, this our object here, will be moving uh, along with the stars. And I wonder if that's Chadron right there, uh, the, uh, the, the moon of Pluto. I wonder. Um, yeah. Anyway, there you have it. You know, in the past, I've been trying to get Uranus and Neptune, and it was very difficult. I did manage to find them, but now with this technique, it's much easier to find these planets. Now, I, I was using the Orion Eon 130 millimeter F7 refractor. Next, I want to put it on the Celestron F10 at 2800 millimeter focal length and see if I can use the same techniques. Now, I, I don't expect to get much details at all with the planet Pluto, but I do expect to see something with uh, Neptune and Uranus. Uh, those are bluish and greenish uh, type planets, and they're still, you know, a billion and two billion miles away as compared to Pluto's three, was it three and a half billion, I think? Anyway, uh, the planets are now coming into view in the uh, evening, actually the nighttime skies haven't quite gotten into the evening sky. Well, Venus is over there with Mercury at sunset, but still kind of low in the horizon. But uh, Saturn and Mars and Jupiter will be coming into view as well already. Uh, Saturn's into view. I haven't been able to capture it yet because of all these trees I have in my vicinity. But I'll be uh, working on those uh, in the next coming weeks and months, assuming the sky is going to clear. I think it's going to clear. The, uh, I, I love shooting the planets, and I bought the, the uh, Celestron Edge 11 inch simply and, and basically for the planets. And I want to capture the planets. So uh, we're going to be doing that in the next several weeks. So keep Keep an eye right here on uh, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And I would like to thank all my supporters uh, through uh, buying me a coffee, by uh, uh, joining my uh, YouTube channel, by uh, uh, super thanks, and uh, joining my Patreon page. All these help with my development of this channel. Uh, it, it costs quite a bit of money to maintain the astronomy equipment to produce this channel and any astronomy channel come to think of it. And I also have a weather and nature uh, channel which I've been uh, showing a lot of weather videos over the last several weeks because of the weather conditions uh, here in my area. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna have a link to one of the uh, uh, videos uh, that I just uh, the other night where we had this massive thunderstorm pass through our area. Uh, the, the link to that will be at the end of this video. So if you wanna check that out. But thank you for everybody who helps support my channel. and. You know, I just love astronomy. I love weather and nature, and I love the garden. But astronomy is one of my favorites. I've been involved with astronomy since I've been, well, you know, I, I've always enjoyed it since I was seven years old. Anyway, one thing I realize is this. The heavens are filled with majestic wonders. And you know what? 
They're all in a sky near you and in your own backyard. So get up and get out and look at the sky at night. And hopefully you won't get struck by lightning. Uh, bye.